We have a 2020 Nissan LEAF SL Plus, which is the big battery with all the options. Its EPA range rating is 215 miles. However, what's it gonna do at 70 miles per hour cruising down the highway? We test every car like this. We're gonna see what it does. Interestingly, the base one, the S, is EPA range rated at 226 miles, 11 miles more than this car. And I think it's down to those base aero wheels that you get. Anyway, we have the car topped up to 100%. We are just off the highway. We're gonna go round trip to the Electrify America charging station, which is just down the road. So it's pretty much a full round trip uh, range test. Pretty good conditions, slight wind, about 85 degrees outside. Let's go see what kind of range we can get out of the Leaf. We are topped up to 100%. The car just completed charging. I do not have it on, but Timon's gonna be here with me, our cameraman, as you guys know. And uh, we're gonna go two people in the car. We're gonna keep the air conditioning on normal, 72 degrees automatic. We'll run Eco. We're gonna put it in braking with E-pedal. And then we're just gonna use ProPilot at 70 miles per hour, down 95 and back up just down the street to the Electrify America charging station. And we'll see how far we can go. This car is 3,549 miles on it. Let me show you really quick the battery degradation because it's a fresh, fresh car, which is nice. How do I get to it though? I have to go over to uh, info perhaps. Oh no, it's the little eco car one. There we go. Battery temperature is right in the middle, which is great. And battery capacity is full. Again, this car is not a liquid cooled pack. So temperature will kill capacity, which is why I requested a pretty fresh car from Nissan. And they sent this one with low miles. So let's jump on the highway. We're gonna reset our trip computer and everything and get going. Nissan Leaf, 223 miles predicted on the guessometer, the GOM as we say. How many will we get? I don't know. I'd be surprised if this does more than 200 miles cruising at 70 miles per hour. We're gonna keep the headlights off. AC again and a very eco-friendly setting, but we always run AC on our range tests and it is 87 degrees outside. Topped all the way up. What will we arrive back with? I don't know. Timon, what do you think? How many miles will we get? One, knowing you. Oh, no, no, I have to drive easy for these. I can't floor it. We're just cruising. The highway entrance is right over here. I, I think we'll get 190 miles. I'd say that's good. Yeah, I'd say that's great if we can get that much. We'll see, though. It could be a long day if it goes on for a while. <laughs> Well, you can tell this car has almost no regen when it's full, and that's a great way to know that we, it, the pack is truly topped up. Of course, if you full charge a car and you let off the accelerator pedal and it regens, it means it's not really full because you're putting more energy in it. So here we are merging on the highway quite gently, which is nice. We don't want to burn any energy off as extra heat loss that's unnecessary. What we're going to do is get us up to 70 miles per hour, put us on pro pilot, and then I'm going to take our GPS device and measure GPS 70 miles per hour because sometimes what the car says isn't actually what we're doing. We've calibrated the speedometer with GPS and it is actually 70 miles per hour. Uh, very few cars are this accurate, so props to Nissan on that. We're down to 97% already. Keep in mind, typically the first few miles, you always use a little bit more juice, merging on the highway, getting all set. But once it settles out, we will have a great idea. And this is the Electrify America charging station right off this exit. So we will be good to go once we get some miles under our belt. Just merged onto I-95 South, which is where we're heading in North Carolina, of course. We are at 70 miles per hour. And this, this is a perfect situation because we are not holding anyone up, which is nice. And we're also not too close to the truck in front of us for aero advantage. In fact, he's pulling away from us slightly. So we have the perfect distance because again, we don't want to give it an unfair advantage of following a truck too closely. And of course, we don't want to hold up all of the state of North Carolina behind us. So this is a good compromise. We can always make some moves in traffic if we have to, but hopefully we can keep in this pattern of kind of in our own little space, just cruising at a constant 70. We have, again, one last note about the car setup. We did check all the tire pressures and they are set to 36 PSI, which is the manufacturer recommended tire pressure. Of course, you can always run higher pressures and get less rolling resistance, but we always run manufacturer suggested tire pressures. 
We are about 16% of the way through the range test. I know that because we're at 84%. Uh, let's talk a little bit about ProPilot though. That's what I'm using. Uh, it's the car's adaptive cruise control, basically the ADAS system on the car. Now we have a new review channel. I'm gonna plug very briefly. It's called Out of Spec Reviews where we dive into the entire front to back on every car we test. We test a new car every week, not just electric. But we do have EVs, plug-in hybrids, etc. And we will go in depth on uh, pilot assist. No, that's the Volvo one. What's this one? Pro Pilot in our out of spec review channel. However, uh, it's doing a fantastic job. It does a great way of keeping distance to the car in front, although we are trying to keep the cars as far away as possible. And look, it's steering us no problem. It does make you totally interact with the system way more than Tesla's autopilot does. But in terms of lane centering, it's almost as competent as the autopilot system. Now, if you go in our out of spec reviews uh, uh, site, you'll see a Lexus LS 500 review. I did a huge section on the ADAS functionality and that car changes lanes for you. This does not do that. So Tesla is still better and Lexus is better in that category. But ProPilot is making this range test super, super easy. Let's do it while we're on camera. Let's do a quick efficiency check. We are uh, 31.4 miles into our trip and we're averaging 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And so that is right on par with what we've seen from the Chevy Bolt and Hyundai Kona, both with similar size battery packs at this same distance into the drive. This is going to be a close one. We're at 75% state of charge and we've gone exactly 50 miles, which would indicate a 200 mile total range. Now the thing is, uh, there are some elevation differences, obviously that's why we do a round trip. And I don't remember if it's more efficient going this way or the other way. Either way, it's gonna be right around 200 miles by the time we do the full circular round trip. Uh, and that's gonna be pretty exciting. If it can hit 200 miles, I would be impressed. Getting off at 57% to make our turnaround loop. Essentially what we'll do is we will uh, give ourselves just a little buffer to get back up there in case we are less efficient on the return route. And then we will uh, just drive, you know, looping around on that section of road near the charger like we typically do until we are all the way dead. And we do run our range test to zero. So kind of what I'm thinking is uh, before we do a charging test, one of the problems with a air-cooled battery pack like this car is just driving it, especially in the heat, and we've creeped up to the, the low 90 degree range, is it really heats up the uh, battery pack. And what that will do is when we plug it into a fast charger, it will limit our charging speeds. So what I think we're going to do is go back to our starting point, back to my house, plug it in just a little bit to get it off of dead, and then let the battery cool maybe at 10 or 15% state of charge. And then tonight, once the temperatures are down, do the Chatamo DC fast charging curve test when everything is nice and cool. So that is going to be the plan for the end of this test. We're doing a true loop back to my driveway. We're gonna plug it into my house at zero. So let's get us back up to 70 miles per hour. And we are set at 70 on ProPilot. We've driven 81.6 miles. We have 56% battery remaining. And we'll just keep going all the way back home, a little bit past home, loop back around until she's dead. Just driving past our exit, where we started this whole thing, right, right by our house. We're at 13% state of charge. I'm gonna cancel our destination here, cancel route, yes. So this is where we started. We're 160.4 miles into it, and uh, we have 13% remaining. The car is predicting 29 miles left. So we're gonna drive about 15, 14 miles up the road this way, turn around, and then we have a 50 mile per hour service road right by our house that we're able to just drive until it's dead uh, and plug in. Of course, I'll let you know the mileage when we get off the highway of how well it did just cruising at 70. Getting off at our turnaround point again to go back towards the house. We may do one more of these, we'll see. Uh, the reason that we can't just keep stretching it is it's like a six mile stretch to the next exit and we don't have 12 miles to spare. At this rate, we'd be getting home with about five or six miles of range, which is totally fine. And we'll just burn off the rest on the B roads around the house. So 
This is how we do all range tests. It's never perfect science, but it is fairly close. So let's see what we get. We just received our first warning here. Battery charge is now low at 12 miles predicted on the GOM at 6% state of charge. I'm going to hit OK and we will continue on. Running this thing down, we're at 3% state of charge, 7 miles predicted on the gasometer. We're just getting ready to get off at the next exit. And one of the things that I'm looking for here in the battery percentage is for it to jump around. Uh, sometimes, because I don't know the use of this car, it was just dropped off yesterday. Uh, if the battery hasn't really seen the bottom of the pack a lot, it may be confused as to how much is left in there. And on one side, it can be confused thinking it has more than it does. In that case, we're pretty good. And in another sense, it could be confused thinking it, we have less than we do. And in that case, it would go from like three and then two one, and then we'd be out of juice. So that's something I'm keeping my eye on and something you should always keep an eye on when running an EV out to the bottom is look for inconsistencies in the BMS. For example, on top charge today, uh, the car said it completed at 98%. I thought that was weird, so I replugged it in. Two seconds later, it said, oh, by the way, we're completed at 100%. So it's just, uh, you know, the BMS may not be perfect here, and it's something to look forward to. So we're doing our last turnaround. We've gone past the house, past the house in the direction we started in, and now heading back. We're about to get off. And yeah, we're at 180 miles almost. So this is doing pretty well. I don't think we'll hit that 200 mark, but maybe 190, maybe 185, we'll see. We are at 2% state of charge. This just said, would you like to search for a nearby charging station? Just for fun, let's see what it does. Uh, charge point seven miles away, which we can't make it to. <laughs> and another charge point 17 miles away which we also can't make it to, and it doesn't show the Electrify America that's right down the street, so that is very poor, Nissan. On our range remaining, we have dash, dash to empty at 2%, so at this point, it's all just about feeling out the car for the bottom of the pack, which is something only you get a feeling for after doing it many times, so our tire pressures went up a little bit from the heat but we are about to get off our exit and run on the B road. So on the highway cruising, we've done 100, let's say 82 miles by the time we get to our exit right up here. We found this little menu over here in this system that shows, even though the on-screen system shows dash dash to empty, this says current driving range is five miles. Of course, we'd gain a little if we turned off climate control. We're not gonna do that though. We're just cruising around here 50 miles an hour. And uh, that's about that. Keep each other up too. We cruising along here. When we've lost our one percent, we now have dash dash to empty. But the car still feels pretty powerful. Cruising along again, fifty miles an hour, no problem. We're gonna keep going. We are nearing the end of our range test here, and I wanted to show you something kind of interesting. We're here on my street. And you can see now, you know, this has been showing dash, dash, miles, dash, dash, percentage. And we've driven about seven miles like that. Um, but this screen here seems to be more accurate. But for every like two or three miles we drive, it loses one mile of current driving range. But look at the acceleration performance on a dead battery. This is the impressive part here. It's just amazing how quick this thing is. So you put your foot down and it just still rockets forward. It's a little bit slower than it normally is, but really not by much. That is impressive acceleration. Well, we have done 193.6 miles in the LEAF on one charge, uh, mostly at 70 miles per hour. The last, let's say, eight miles or so were done at 50. And while it didn't run all the way to where it wouldn't move, it really had severe power uh, right here at the end, severe power cut. So I would say the pack's pretty much drained all the way. I don't think you'd be able to get 200 out of it. So 193, maybe you could go 194, but nearest makes no difference. And it's a little bit better than my colleague Tom got in this car. And I would argue that um, our temperature being warm out actually was a benefit for this. We actually ran the AC very lightly on this particular run. We had it at 80 miles, 80 uh, degrees Fahrenheit auto, and it was still blowing quite cold. So it was not taxing the system at all. And again, 193.6 miles is not a bad performance. It's not as good as the Kona or the Bolt, but it's still 
about 200 miles, you really can't complain much. So this is a Tesla to J1772 adapter. Here at where I live, we have not installed uh, J1772 chargers yet. They are going in though. Um, and so I use this little adapter to charge up the car. And there we go. We'll just bring it up to about five or 10%. And then you'll see in another video, I'll link in the description where we do a zero to 100% DC fast charge with this thing. So I'm just gonna let the battery cool off after that drive.